Welcome back for part two. This is a continuation of me explaining how I make and use my hair growth treatment. Almost everything that you see me using came from Amazon, like the bottles, the straining tools like the cheesecloth and the funnels, the powders, some of the oils. The less the mess, the better. So try to find a strainer that has a fine enough mesh but is also sturdy so you don't have to struggle with the cheesecloth, the funnel, and the bottle. I feel like the cheesecloth soaks in too much of my oil. The particles blocked up some of the oil from getting into the bottle quickly so I had to move up the cheesecloth and the funnel to free up the space. Those particles are very hard to get out of your hair so if you have to strain it twice to make sure there's no particles from the shebe powder in your oil do that but i was able to make sure that none of the particles got in my oil with the cheesecloth in the previous video i advised that shebe powder shouldn't be applied to the scalp because it can cause itchiness or irritation i've forgotten and put the shebe powder on my scalp a couple of times and nothing has happened. Plus, I feel like using the carrier oils with it, the fact that I don't have dandruff and how infrequently I use it, I think I'll be okay. I love this particular vitamin E oil. I add it to my oils that I make so that they last longer. It can help some oils last up to a year. Pay attention to the international units or milligrams. Some people need more or less. I love these applicator bottles. They get into my corn rolls and into my braids. It dispenses the oil so evenly and quickly. You just have to make sure your oil is strained properly. I spread the oils throughout my scalp down to the ends of my hair. Then I slap on a plastic cap or two because they're so small sometimes. And then I sit under the dryer for about 30 minutes. I make all my oils the same way, just with different botanicals and herb mixtures. So let's discuss some other infusion methods that I use, my hair routine, and less rank hair growth options. Before I found out about Amla, Gringraj, Fenugreek, Shebe, I used to use this shampoo recipe that I got from an Indian lady on YouTube. Once all of these ingredients are boiled, they do not smell. They have a smell, but it's not bad. It's easily masked with any other perfume, like using peppermint or a scented leave-in conditioner. For the shampoo, I put two cups of water in a saucepan and then turn on the stove on low between 140 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit so that the water stays hot but it's not boiling. I add all of the ingredients except for the apple cider vinegar and I let them simmer in the water for 20 minutes or steep for two hours and mixing it up periodically to ensure even infusion. And I've boiled it before. Some people boil it for 10 minutes but keep in mind that exposure to high heat and for too long can remove some of the beneficial nutrients from the herbs. Let the water cool down fully and then strain the water into a container. Add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to the mixture and stir. Then you can add your shampoo to the water and mix it together. Then add that mixture into the rest of your shampoo bottle. Make sure you shake it up and mix it well every time you go to use it. And you can use it up to two times a week or every time you wash your hair. I have been able to use my shampoos for up to a month, leaving it out of the refrigerator, but you can get a longer use if you put it inside the refrigerator. You can also freeze some in the ice cube tray and just thaw some every time you need to use it. Here are examples of boiling, simmering, and steeping. So boiling, I say it has a bunch of bubbles. You can see everything kind of moving. Simmer, there's less bubbles than what I put here, but it's smaller bubbles. And then steep is just steaming. 
an oil infusion that I used before I found out about the powders. And one of the oil infusion examples I showed earlier is the ginger and clove with sunflower oil. I have very low porosity here, meaning it does not absorb, absorb moisture well. Sometimes water and oils will just sit on my hair and slide off. There's no absorption sometimes. But sunflower oil has small enough molecules to penetrate my hair and so does castor oil. I use both of these oils and when my hair is in better shape, I use coconut oil because it too absorbs really well in my hair shaft. So to make this oil, you would just add the sunflower oil, the ginger and the cloves to a frying pan. Let the ginger and the cloves simmer in the oil for about 15 minutes, then let it all cool down fully. Strain the contents from the oil and apply it to your hair from the root to the tip. Massage your head for five minutes, cover with a plastic hair cap, and let it sit for two to four hours. I like using my hair dryer for 30 minutes. It opens my hair cuticles and my hair feels so soft after I use it. Then I wash my hair with shampoo or you can leave the oil in your hair. I add a few drops of the vitamin E oil to the oil that I infuse and I store it in a tinted container in the refrigerator to help it last longer. The moisture from the ginger or any fresh roots will cause the oil to mold if left at room temperature or faster than it would if you used a dry root. A more potent but longer method of oil heat infusion is to place the dried herbs and or powders in a heat proof mason jar or container pouring the oil, making sure all of the contents in the jar are covered and mixing thoroughly. Then you place that jar or container in a slow cooker or in a pan with a couple of inches of water and turn on the warm setting. Then you leave it from for about two to eight hours and you would let it cool all the way down. If you're using fresh herbs, keep the lid off the jar to allow the water to evaporate away from the oil. Then you can strain the herbs and or powders from the oil. Add a few drops of vitamin E oil to prevent against rancidity and mix it well. And store the mixture in a glass container, ideally tinted away from direct sunlight. And you can refrigerate it to make it last longer. If you have a translucent or transparent glass rather, you can always just cover that up with something that is opaque. Cold infusion is the longest but the most effective method. Just like all the other methods, you would put your herbs and powders and your carrier oil in a sealable glass container, but you would let it sit at room temperature, ideally in a location with a lot of sunlight to infuse anywhere from two to four weeks and I would stir it daily to make sure the infusion is even. You would strain the oil like any other method and add your antioxidant like vitamin E to prevent rancidity. Here's a list of some popular botanicals and herbs that you can get in the dried or powder form on Amazon or specialty stores. If you look up Ayurvedic hair growth, you'll see an even longer list, Ayurveda, is basically Indian holistic medicine and treatments. Pay attention to the medicinal and scientific aspects of Ayurveda, not the spiritual because that is not of God. And make sure that you're looking up what each one of these botanicals or herbs do because some of them can ruin your hair if used too frequently or if used with other similar products like fenugreek and rosemary, those are strengthening herbs. Well, fenugreek is a seed. And if you use either of them incorrectly too frequently or together too much, you can make your hair brittle and break off. And am amla and bringraj are said to help you retain your hair color, but it 
also is said to make your hair darker. I haven't seen any changes since using the two, but I'm also not using them in the method that you would in order to tint your hair color. They are all medicinal, but you have to find what works well for you. No matter what I'm using, my infused water method is usually the same all the time. I add rice and hot water in a sealable glass bottle and I leave it at room temperature for about 48 hours. Then I strain the water and pour it into a tinted glass spray bottle and store it in the refrigerator for up to two weeks or I freeze it in one use sizes. If I'm infusing herbs and spices into my water, I sometimes leave some of the herbs and spices in the water and store it in a tinted glass spray bottle in the refrigerator so that their contents are more concentrated in my water. Some of these spices and herbs can be irritable to your skin, so I suggest that you do a patch test to see how your skin will react. Here is the rice water in a jar that I recycled. It is the most annoying cap ever. I cannot get it off. You'll need a lot of storage space in your refrigerator and freezer so that you don't have to constantly be making these things. It does get very messy at times and you don't want laziness to knock you off of your routine because consistency is key. Rice water is great for protein treatments. It will not smell too bad after soaking for two days, but after that, it will. Man, I'm tired. Catch me in part three.